Okay, now, I did a joke during the monologue about a Garfield doll. And let me say from the outset, a Garfield doll is a very popular doll. We love Garfield dolls. How many of you got a Garfield doll for Christmas? Okay. People stick them, you know, on their windshield, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people get a little tired of that kind of behavior. Garfield doll, I guess, is the hot toy of the last, what, year or so? Yeah. First it was Pet Rocks, the baby on board signs. Thank God they're gone, gone right? <laughs> Rubik's Cube, we're good right. for a while. Uh, prices of the dolls, I guess, were about $13 to $25, depending on the size of Garfield's dolls. And we've made a lot of jokes about them as to what you could do with your Garfield doll. <laughs> now, before we start this, don't send... I know people get very emotional about right. little kitty cats. <laughs> don't send us any letters. We, we check with a few people and ask, us, ask them to send us in uh, some suggestions or what they might have done with a Garfield doll, just to kind of break the monotony. So we're going to show you some pieces of tape of what these people came up with. Don't send any letters here. <laughs> this, is just, this is just a doll made out of fur and polyester or whatever, so it has nothing to do with kitty cats. I love kitty cats as well as the next guy. But I know how people, how emotional people are with their little kitty cats. So... <laughs> All right, the first one is that it was sent to us by an amateur golfer in Orlando, Florida, and he received his Garfield as a birthday. Can we roll that tape, uh, Bob? <laughs> Usually those kind of shots with a kitty go up in a sand trap, but let's see, all right. Uh, next tape came to us from Winnemucca, Nevada. This gentleman uh, received his Garfield for Christmas from his sister-in-law, and uh, here's his use for Garfield. <laughs> Just one of the many uses for your Garfield doll, friends. That, uh, From uh, Mount Oglethorpe, Georgia. <laughs> this, this guy wanted a bowling ball for Christmas. He didn't get it. So here's, here's what he did. Oh, no, that, oh. wrong one. Oh, I'm one ahead. I'm, this is another you. Now, we love little kitty cats, don't we? <laughs> did I get out of order here? Yeah. I guess I did get out of order, didn't I? All right, let's see. Where are we at now? Well, let's just roll the next one here. I don't know what's coming up now. Ah, oh, yes, here's the one here's I was talking about. Yeah, I just, I got flip-flopped here. <laughs> Our viewer signs from Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. All right, this this lady got two Garfields apparently for Christmas. So here's what she did with, with hers. Oh, it's just it's just a toy. <laughs> it's great for white mouth bass, I would suppose. Just just a fishing lure. All right. Now, the next tape is from Lompoc, California. Um, well, I'll just show you. <laughs> okay, uh, here's one. Uh, this is a little sad. Um, <laughs> Gentleman North Dakota wanted a Garfield offer Christmas, but it didn't quite arrive in time, and here's the tape his wife uh, sent us. And of course, as he goes. I'm 
<laughs> I must mention. Okay, this. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's 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 our next to last one. Go. Oh. We have one more that somebody mailed in. I don't quite understand this. Apparently, this guy found that shaving, he's got the suction cups and everything. This guy found that shaving in the morning was such a, a lonely experience that he invented this. Let me show you how this works. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shaving cream dispenser, which I, is kind of, I think is kind of nice. <laughs> okay, now, this is just, just a toy, folks. They're not, not real. There's people in their cats, they really get steamed. When we filmed that one with the hearse, we actually went out and shot it with a hearse driving down the street, and people almost went crazy when they saw it. <laughs> they actually thought that somebody was, you know, there was somebody going to their final resting place and would put the Garfield cat there. <laughs> Should we do this first? We shall be right back. Here's a word from Eureka Vacuum Cleaner. They have the power to sweep you off your feet. Now, folks. I promised you last night some unusual videotape tonight. It's important for a juror to realize, of course, that there are two sides to every story. We have obtained some footage of the incident. Independent. <laughs> As you well know now, people have these uh, home camcorders, right. and um, the news stations very often seek them out if they happen to be at the scene of some uh, newsworthy incident right. and ask to see their film. Uh, we have two versions of the alleged run-in with Miss Gabor and the Beverly Hills Police, shot by two different passerbys. Or is it passersby? Passersby. Passersby. Uh, before you make up your mind who is guilty, uh, you should watch these two clips. Uh, let's, let's see the first one. You can watch the monitor. Okay, now that's, that's one. <laughs> that's one. Now that's... That is just one passerby's perspective. However, shot from a different angle, you'll see there may be something the judge just charges of police brutality after all. Let's take a look at this one. There you have it, friends. We, uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to hard to. And it's really hard to tell, but I'm sure that tape will be introduced at the trial. We want to thank roving, thank roving news homes, Richard uh, Friley and David Carter from Kentucky, who just happened to have their cameras ready. What a lucky struck, a lucky stroke of luck for us, or a lucky strike. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, um, I, when's that trial supposed to be? You know, early September. Early September. That's going to be fun, isn't yeah. it? Fun. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll be back with Muzzy Braun and the Little Braun Brothers. Yeah. 
Did you know my shoe size is eight and a half? I just Did heard you know? that. That's amazing. Weird, weird audience tonight. Oh, look. <laughs> In fact, we have something we had planned to do last week, two nights. Yeah. And during the monologue, uh, the audiences were a little iffy, and we, we kind of just you put it aside. You not to do it. But I think tonight, yeah. we're going to try this. Now, first of all, <laughs> we are uh, going to start off with a little trivia question. Um, there was an Oscar-winning filmmaker some years ago, and who do you associate it with if I just go, uh-oh, he did it again? Does that ring a bell with anybody here? Mm -hmm. You have to be a certain yeah. age. Me. No. No? Does the name Pete Smith ring a bell to any of you? Yeah. There was a gentleman by the name of Pete Smith who did a series of little, oh, I guess I must have been 10 or 12 minute shorts yeah. called Pete Smith Specialties. And they were wonderful. And they were about a fellow by the name of Joe McDokes, I think, who was kind of a, a nerdish kind of character. Nothing ever went right. He was yeah. a hapless kind of a guy. He'd come home and you'd see a, a roller skate on the sidewalk. And Pete Smith used to do... Oh, I bet he doesn't see the skate. Oh, he did it again. Yeah, right, yeah. And hit the seat, and yeah. he would fall down. Very clumsy. And uh, we've been looking for something that might lend itself to that style of narration. So what we... Uh, by the way, Pete Smith won two Oscars for Best Short Subject and an honorary Oscar in 1953. I think he passed away a few years ago. So we're going to do this. The other day we were wondering if we could find a piece of film that might lend itself to that Pete Smith kind of narration, yes. we would do it. Well, we have it. We put together a short film on the Pete Smith. I'll try to do, I don't do exactly, but he does that kind of, here he is again. So if you watch the monitors, we'll show you what we put together. Howdy, folks. Johnny Carson with White House Workout. <laughs> Welcome to today's episode. Oh, that George. <laughs> so sit back, put your feet up on the dog, and get ready for some high-ranking hijinks as our cameras take you on a private tour among the leisure leaders in our nation's kooky capital. This week, what do you say we tag along with the Commander-in-Chief himself, George Eat My Dust Bush, and see what keeps him in the presidential pink. Well, first, here's good old George out on the links. He's riding in style. Is that golf cart one, George? Uh-oh, who's this? Oh, now he's really in the rough. Well, what's he up to now? Looks like a friendly game of half-court basketball. Now, don't be a ball hog, George. Oops! Oh. Another three-pointer. Batter up. Uh-oh, he did it again. Well, you late for a bus, George? Hardly. It's his morning jog. Now, stay on the sidewalk, George. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Wait till it's dry. Dennis, anyone? But that's not anyone. That's George. Say, is that an ace? Oops, more like an ace man. <laughs> How about some horseshoes? Oh. Did you get it? Did you get it on there? We got it, and he got it. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Kenny Bunkport, Maine, that is. Well, George, it seems that you've hooked something. <laughs> no, that's not a fish, George. That's your wife. <laughs> so we say goodbye to all that George. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh-oh, he did it again. <laughs> oh, that George. That worked perfect for that. Okay. How many of you own, what do they call them now, camcorder? Yeah. A video camcorder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you noticed a lot of the news shows around the country now are resorting, and I guess they ask people if they happen to be near any newsworthy event to send mm -hmm. them any tape they might have taken. I think during the earthquake in San Francisco, the piece of tape that they played over and over again was yeah. taken by a couple, I think, from Oklahoma, who were on vacation crossing right. the Bay Bridge and happened to have the camcorder on. Did yeah. you see that remarkable I saw it many footage? Times, yeah. And the two cars that just yeah. disappeared was. F well, we have a remarkable piece of film tonight's come to our attention. Um, you may have seen this ad first of all. It ties in with this ad that the magician Siegfried and Roy. Are you familiar with Siegfried and Roy? Yeah. Yeah, they do. They do one of the greatest magic acts you've ever seen, and they play up in Las Vegas something like 50 weeks a year, and they were in Radio City Music Hall. Anyway, they were auditioning. This was an ad. Can you see it? Come on, come close. They were auditioning acrobats and dancers. You see, it's on at the bottom. It says, look, please bring resume, photo, and leotards. Must be able to do back handsprings, back aerials, aerial cartwheels, and any other aerial tricks. Well, it seems that an amateur photographer right. was at one of the auditions with a, with a camcorder. And he managed to give us a rather startling footage of one of the people who were auditioning 
uh, for Siegfried and Roy. As you know, they work with all the wild animals yeah. and so forth. So here it is, folks. Watch the monitor. Next. Remarkably lucky uh, circumstance that somebody happened to be there. Yeah. And it's, it's tragic as that is, we uh, wanted you to see it. Yeah, boy. <laughs> heavy stuff. Huh? Heavy stuff. Well, oh. heavier than I thought, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you try it. You try, we don't know. You figure, how do you think that'll play? We laugh, we say, hey, who knows? We, Funny in the office. You put it on, you don't know, sure. we try. It doesn't right. You do it, you what? <laughs> I guess the big news the past couple of weeks has been the Berlin Wall thing. Yeah. And I think there was every American newsman in the world over there. Local stations sent them over. There was Brokaw was over there. Uh, Peter Jennings, maybe see Dan Rather was over there. And if you watch Rather, I like Dan Rather. Yes. Remember when he first started the news, uh, when he replaced Walter Cronkite? He wanted to get a little kind of a gimmick for himself. He ought to get, a, get an identity. So he finished the newscast, I think, with uh, the word. He'd finish the news and he'd say, this is Dan Rather, good night, and courage. And it didn't go over well, no. and he phased that out. So then, for a while, Rather did the news with a sweater. Right. I guess he gave him kind of a homey atmosphere, yeah. you know, and he had a sweater. Then he gave up the sweater. Have you, have you seen him lately while he's doing the news? He stands up. Yeah. He stands next to a kind of a lectern, put yeah. the, you know, so he comes up with a new gimmick. So we thought, what would Dan resort to next? Yeah. So what we have... What well, we have, Bobby, we're going to switch live to this CBS News suite. We can actually switch yes. from upstairs. Bobby, are you there? I'm talking to Bobby. Yeah, right, John. Can we switch live to the CBS News feed to find out what Dan... Yeah, it's just coming up now. Okay, cut in and watch the monitor, and we'll see what Dan is up to, what new gimmick he has. And that's how things are here at the Berlin Wall. This is Dave Carter, CBS News. Back to you, Dan. Okay. Maybe it'll... Who knows? Maybe it'll catch on. <laughs> yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll catch on. Yeah. <laughs> 84-year-old talk show host Johnny Carson celebrated his 22nd wedding anniversary recently to his wife, Alex. Mr. Carson has the longest-running, happiest marriage in show business and is damn proud of it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. CBS's Dan Rather, this newscaster's father, is trying a new sign-off. After reading the nightly news in a turtleneck sweater, standing up and sitting behind a typewriter, the veteran newsman says he's finally found a look that makes him happy. <laughs> and that's the news. This is Zontar Rather saying good night and good luck. I'm going to talk about fruitcakes. We had a lady on last night, I think her name was Gladys uh, Farrick from Texas, who made fruitcakes. We have made a lot of jokes. Did you ever get a fruitcake for Christmas? Always. I got one this Christmas. Do you eat it? No. See, that's the, damned, that's the damned same. Yeah. Nobody eats them. You keep it for a long time. You, you put it up in the closet somewhere, yeah. and then you wait till next Christmas, and you send it send off it to somebody else. else. Uh, and they weigh a ton. They're very heavy. All right, let me show you just... Now, here is a small one. What would you think? Here's a fruitcake. It's country fair called fruitcake. What would you think this, this weighs? It's only a small box. Several pounds? It weighs about two pounds. Wow. And we wanted to see if we could cut it upstairs. Right. We were unable to cut it. So what we did, <laughs> we sent a fruitcake, another fruitcake, you know, one of the regular round ones, and we sent it down. Well, here, let me give you the ingredients in here. Pecans, walnuts, raisins, cherries, almonds or almonds. What do you say? 
Almonds. Almonds, eggs, flour, sugar, fruit juice, candy, lemon peel, rum or whiskey, baking yeah. powder. What? I say, yeah. No, you know that, yeah. huh? <laughs> baking powder, honey, and salt. Now, those are fairly light ingredients. Right. What happens when you put them together that makes it so, so heavy. damn heavy? Yeah. Well, we thought, thought perhaps there's some secret ingredient to account for this, uh, but we couldn't get it open. So what we did, we sent a large fruit cake that we've had up in the office to Carter, is it Carter Friley? Yes. Carter Friley Demolition Company <laughs> in Ashland, Kentucky. And we told them, we told them to open the fruit cake, cut it open in any way they could and film it and send us the film. Watch the monitor. Here's what they sent us. There's your fruit cake. <laughs> there is a carbon steel chains to the back of a pickup. This was their this was their first. <laughs> and <laughs> all right, here we are. Well, they took it out on the railroad here. All right, here we go. The National Karate... Na National Karate... This guy is a mad grand master. So we took it back there. These guys are still... All right. Now look at this machine. This thing is going to rip a car apart. These are the things they use to demolish cars, right? <laughs> this is one of those machines they actually use to take cars right. apart before they... All right, here we go. This exerts about eight tons of pressure. Nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect condition. Nothing. Didn't even put a dent in it. Right. <laughs> well, here we are. These guys are still at it again. Nothing. All right. All right. Here comes the Amtrak 715, which would make it about 1130. <laughs> Now, this ought to do it. No. <laughs> oh. Perfect condition. All right. You guys been out there all day. Dynamite. There's three sticks of dynamite. We tried everything, but I guess now we have to, uh, let's see, take a look. Perfect. Perfect condition. Well, I'm afraid it's time after this. We've done everything here. These guys are still at it late at night. Time to unleash the awesome power of the atom. We may never know what's inside a fruitcake, but however, we did find one good use for your fruitcake. Watch this well-known commercial, and you'll see a perfect use for a fruitcake. Would you like more coffee? Oh, yes, that's wonderful. It's Morning Symphony. And is still going. Not anymore. <laughs> Finally.
Finally. We did it. <laughs> Finally, we found, we'll be right back. Stay where you are. She's over. Yeah. <laughs> Cross that ramp into the elevator. Yeah! Mouth traps over there. Mouth traps at the end. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> okay, now we. Well. <laughs> now that was. Over the years, we've had a lot of requests to repeat that stunt. Uh, now, other shows have done it since then, and I think last year in Tokyo, I think they had it on the nightly news. They used a high school gymnasium and set up something like one million dominoes. It took them several weeks to do it. And I think the thing ran for what? Something like an hour what? and five minutes for them all to fall down. So we said, well, how can we top that? Well, folks, we think we found a way. Tonight, we're going to knock over 8,000 Domino's pizza delivery drivers. <laughs> well, that's right. We've been setting them up all week. <laughs> we're going to start on our stage here. We're going to bring the start of the line, and then as soon as we start it, we're going to have to watch the monitors because we have cameras outside. You'll see them go down the hall at NBC outside. <laughs> they will go over hills. They will spell out NBC and, and, and a big finish. You don't believe me, do you? <laughs> I'm talking show business, yeah. folks. <laughs> 8,000 domino pizza delivery drivers. May we have the start of the line come out, please? I say as soon as this starts, this is the start of the line. It'll continue on outside. You'll have to watch the monitors as soon as we start. Are you gentlemen ready? Good luck. Nine minutes. Well, folks. Very good, folks. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. Uh, well, we never talk. I think. My only regret is Ed Sullivan's not alive to see that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We ought to submit that to the Guinness Book of Records I until somebody so. comes up with 8,001 Domino Pizza Delivery <laughs> Drivers. Anyway, I want to thanks to uh, the students of uh, Paul G. Blazer High School and Russell High School and the Gertrude Rainey Boys Home in Ashland, Kentucky. And for all the uniforms, thanks to uh, Corey Spiroff, who's the Domino's Area Supervisor here in Burbank. I think they did a hell of a job. Nice job. Thank you, gang. Yeah. We'll be back in just a moment. So here you are.
Okay, a lot of you are out here on vacation. How many of you travel now with, uh, with the camcorders, wherever you go? No, okay. Remember the old 8mm? Yes. You'd carry that and you'd go out and you'd shoot 50 feet for three minutes, right? right? Then you'd have to take it and get it edited, no sound. Yeah. Now you go out with these camcorders and you get Wonderful. beautiful pictures that you can almost play right on television. Anyway, one of our viewers, a gentleman named David Carter, uh, took his video camera with him on a recent trip to Indonesia. Uh, he also took along a picture of me and decided to conduct a little poll among the local people. It's, and he sent us the tape. Uh, this is David Carter's tape. Now, this is for real. Watch it. This will do something not much for your ego. Any idea who he is? Yeah. Did you ever see him before? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but I don't know the name, sir. I don't know his name. Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jack Clarepin. Hollywood, yes. Hollywood, yes. Uh, married to uh, Liz Taylor. Married to Liz Taylor? No. no. You know who he is? No. An American TV star. Is he ever been in the Golden Girls? In the Golden Girls? So. No? no? You know who it is? Yes. Who? Oh, who? Who is it? Dead Square. Dan Quayle? Dead Square, yes. Yes, Dan Quayle. Dead Square. It is, yes. 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 I don't know him. You ever see him before on TV? No. What are your favorite TV shows from America? I like Dynasty, Dallas, and L.A. Low. Yes? Yeah, but I never seen this man before. His name is Johnny Carson. Ah, is he? He's a big American TV star. Ah, yeah. Yes, I know. Who is it? This is you. It's me? Yes. But all Americans look alike. Who is this? A TV star. Oh, the TV star? You know who it is? Yes. Who? No, I want to know. I don't know. Oh, you don't know who it is? Yeah. Have you heard of Johnny Carson? Johnny Carson. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I heard his name. is the famous star from the States. What do he do? Is a film star? No. Movie. TV. Oh, the movie TV. TV. Serial. Yes. What is the name of Serial TV? Tonight Show. Tonight Show. Oh, very nice. Do you know they are from America? Uh, no, I don't know. Either of them. But probably maybe uh, one of them is, uh, is this uh, Johnny Carson from Nebraska? Yes, it is. Is it? Yes. <laughs> I, I think the last lady was the president of my Indonesian fan club. Right. <laughs> I don't know where she, uh, how she knew that, or they sent her up to it or not, but that was sent to us by David Carter. Great. Uh, anytime, anytime your ego gets a little big, yes. you know, you should send a, a, a camera mm -hmm. around to some country. When Bob Hope uh, went to do a special from China about three or four years ago, I got a postcard from him. And he says, a billion people over here don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and that loves it. Okay, how many of you people after the Academy Awards, uh, the, uh, the, pe the pictures who won, went to see that particular picture that you might not have seen before? Okay. <laughs> Biggest beneficiary of the Academy this year was Driving Miss Daisy. As of yesterday, it grossed over $93 million. And that was originally what they call, I guess, in Hollywood, or, or a small picture. Uh, pictures nowadays cost, I guess, a minimum of like $20 million, and that probably was made, what, for less than that? Uh... Now, when a big budget film wins an Oscar, the studio, you know, pumps a lot of money into it to get me people to go. Unfortunately, the nominees for the smaller awards, folks, <laughs> often go unnoticed. How many of you right now can name the nominees for best short subject that won at the Academy Awards? Nobody, I'll warrant. And I will warrant you that. Warrant yes. it directly. So tonight, we thought we would give one of those smaller films the publicity the studios have denied them. Here's one of the nominees. Didn't win for the 1989 Academy Awards for Best Short Subject.
should have taken that trolley. Hawk, Hawk, you're going too fast. Miss Daisy, I'm only going 19 miles an hour. Speed limit's 35. Besides, no rich white lady should be riding no trolley with no grocery store bag. You know, my husband taught me to operate an automobile. You can't pull anything over on me. Did you get that air conditioning fixed? Yeah, I got it fixed. I don't know what for. You don't ever allow me to turn it on. How? You know this isn't the way to the Piggly Wiggly. Oh, I ain't driving you to no damn Piggly Wiggly. I'm trying to drive you to the wall. <laughs> No, I'm trying to drive you to the wall. Eat bricks, old woman. <laughs> Crashing with Daisy. Coming to a theater near you. Yes, that was a sort of Crashing Miss Daisy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Daisy was played by Lorena Shank in the voice of Hope was performed by our very own Robert Smith. Bob Smith, one of the writers yeah, of our staff. Great. Good job, folks. Good. We'll be back with Mayor Sonny Bono in a moment. As you probably are well aware, oh, by the way, John Lowerkett, Mark Schiff, and Kurt Thomas later on. You imagine he's going back into, into competition? After 10 years. I admire him for that. Yeah. Okay. You, you probably know that one of the hottest shows on television for the past, uh, I guess, month or so, a couple months, has been... America's Funniest Home Videos, hosted by a, a nice young guy who's been on our show, Bob Saget. Now, when a number one show comes out, what does television do? Copy? <laughs> this, is, this is pretty much a copycat business, folks. Local shows have jumped on the bandwagon. Oprah Winfrey the other day did a special on home videos. And uh, I saw, and I'm not going to mention the person's name, I actually saw uh, last week a host of a syndicated show actually asked viewers to send in their sexiest home videos. <laughs> now, does that strike you just a little, uh, yeah. little perverse? Yeah. Can you imagine Sex and the staff sitting back there watching these sexiest home videos? Some slob running around in a bathroom, you know, hi, Marge. Yeah. <laughs> That's going too far. That's going too far. Anyway, coming up on NBC, Dick Clark's Do-It-Yourself TV is right. coming up. Now, we have some standards on The Tonight Show. We do? Not yes. <laughs> I didn't say they were lofty standards, but look, standards can be low, right? Okay. We, we have standards, though. Right, it's okay. up to you where they, where they go. So we asked The Tonight Show staff, we says, why don't we jump on this? This thing has taken off. Why don't we have our staff members bring in their funniest home videos? Well, folks, we asked them, and they did. <laughs> we received six from the staff we think are pretty good. The first is Tommy Newsom. Here's his funniest home video. Bobby? Should have seen the dull stuff we cut out. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, our receptionist, Mike Barron. Uh, Mike thought he'd give his little wife a surprise one day, so we went home early. Oh, honey, I've got a little surprise for you. Boy, was her face red. Yeah. <laughs> One of our writers, Bob Smith, owns a horse, so his wife, Terry, took this humorous home video of Bob last week. Trouble with that sheet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, now. <laughs> our next two videos are from Greg Elliott, our head prop man, and Mike Huber, one of our correspondents. I should point out that, again, nobody was really hurt. Watch these. Timmy, don't play with the chicken. We'll be home in a minute. Quit playing with the radio. Timmy, don't play with the garage door opener. You'll open somebody else's door by mistake. He gets distracted. Oh. 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 <laughs> and here's Tommy in that wacky sheet. Let's see how he does this time. Huh? He's, hey, hey, hey. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, now, before I show you this next one, I want to caution you and let you know that this is not for real. Uh, this is make-believe from start to finish, because a lot of controversy about some of the other video shows, some of the critics thought that people were being unnecessarily cruel and too violent, right? And might be jeopardizing young kids to get on television. So when you see this, it has to do with a baby. I want you to understand, <laughs> really. Now listen to me, seriously. Well, you'll see the baby at the beginning, you'll see the baby at the end, uh, from then on, in between, it's just a bundle. So don't, you may go, ooh, nah. I'm, I'm telling you now. <laughs> that we did not use a real child for this, and we're not saying that anybody should even try to do this. <laughs> just watch it. <laughs> this is our uh, Sandy Gillis and her husband, Tom, just had a baby. So pretty. So pretty. I just love you. <laughs> It's just a, it's just a bundle, folks. Yes, we know, we know. Just a doll. If you just happen to tune in at home in the middle of that, <laughs> let me emphasize that that was just a bundle, a rag yes. bundle. We did not do anything with the baby, so don't, you know, no. think you saw something you didn't see and write in, because that would be hard to explain. <laughs> you see somebody just tuning in going, my God, <laughs> they've gone crazy. Okay, we'll be back in a moment. Folks, this is the new Infinity Super Zoom 300 from Olympus for really great pictures. Smile. <laughs> There's no business like, you've heard that old truism, everybody wants to be in show business, yes. there's no business like show business. All right, how many, let's take a poll, why don't you come out of town, how many, it happens everywhere, locally here, in the station, weatherman now, do little models. We have a very clever guy out here in KNBC, Fritz Coleman, yes. who does good humor, but then you finally get around to the weather, yeah. but along with a few jokes. Sportscasters do that. How many of your local sportscasters also do a little monologue or little jokes or show highlight. comic highlights? 
on the field. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you want to see the highlights today, and they're showing you the uh, best, most painful collision, the best catch, the so forth and so on. So we taped all the local news shows around the country just last week. Now, I'm going to show you some of the tape to illustrate what we mean. Watch the monitors here, folks. Uh, now, the British Open is going on right now. You'd expect to find out who's leading, right? Who's in second place? They ignored all of that and showed this lucky shot instead. Heimlich putt. <laughs> All right, there was an amazing game in the World Basketball League last Tuesday night. Uh, Saskatchewan beat Memphis in overtime, 117-116. But did the local sportscasters show the game-winning shot? No. No. Instead, we got this. Records broke in a practically every track meet, especially track and field. And there are plenty of real heroes like uh, Florence uh, Rip Joyner, Carl Lewis. And it's a pity when they ignore them. And instead, an error and accomplishment like this. Watch this one. This is Watch the last place man. True sportsmanship, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Now, as you know... <laughs> what production values, folks. <laughs> They're already uh, doing football tryouts, and uh, now a real journalist would go out there and, and uh, profile the rising young um, stars and so forth. Instead, we get this sleazy incident used by some local sportscast, uh, sportscaster in the nation. I mean, practice scrimmage. Watch this. Tacky, tacky. about, folks. That's what's happening in this grand old game of ours. That's just uncalled for. Okay. Now, the other night, Minnesota made two triple plays in one game. Then went out the next night and got six double plays. Did we see that on local sports? No. no. They were too busy showing this cheap double play. Watch the player chewing the huge wad of tobacco. game look what they're doing to it folks well we have them. now if you're a basketball fan if you're a basketball fan you know about hang time right right guys like michael jordan they they look like they're suspended you know like a slow motion or animated for, for minutes they're hanging in the air well we have a piece of tape shows america's obsession with long hang time this may have gone too far this is the longest hang time i've ever seen on a basketball club This is 
is unbelievable hang timing. Incredible. Incredible. All right, guess who's here tonight? They'll be out here in just a moment to join us, but here's a word from Michelob's Dry Beer. Go, bold taste with no aftertaste. Yeah, they yes. two of them. Huh? Yes, they do. <laughs> Give me that. Won't let my friends now in. They took my audience, took my stars last night. Now they won't let my friends in here. <laughs> anyway, it's nice to have you all here. Okay, now I talked about the lottery. How many of you actually play the lottery? Don't be okay. Somebody won $44 million, but has not identified himself no. yet. And uh, there's a state lottery, and I guess lots of states now have legalized lotteries to raise money, I guess, for education. And maybe it's a good thing, I don't know. How do you choose your numbers? Do you ever play? Never play. Most people have some kind of, for their some reason, or... they use the children's ages, their, um, their marriage date, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of things. Right. They're thinking that that's yeah. going to improve their odds or something. You can buy books. Look at this. This no. book is going to be about 200 pages. The only way to win at Lotto. We're not plugging the book. The guy made a book about this. Yeah. How to pick your personal lottery numbers. Hot Lotto numbers. Discover your personal lucky numbers for Lotto. And they sell this stuff. Now, how many of you would, you, would buy these books to help you win the lottery? Yeah. All the well, folks from your hometown. Look at that. Well, Everybody from they're Corning. Just, they're just hoping to move down front here. <laughs> You can buy a, there's a thing called Language Master by Franklin. It's available, I guess, at Sharper Image, and you can actually, by pressing certain numbers here, they will come up with five different numbers, and you press again, it'll give you another five numbers. Did it change? Yeah. In other words, it selects them at random. Wow. And for whatever reason. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that wow, nice? yeah. That was my feeling exactly. Well, I... Yeah. I'm, wow. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but I would guess that this doesn't mean anything at all, these books, right? The laws of probability would be, I would guess, now, how many, you have 49 numbers? And they have what they call a six pick, is that it? 56 numbers. 56 numbers 56 now. 56 numbers. They say the odds are something like one in 15 million. Now, actually, you could take any five numbers and play them continually, your odds would be as good, would they not? As yeah. any, you can play one, two, three, four, five, six, and your chances of that coming up are just as good as any five sure. or six random numbers. Right. That's the law of probabilities, anyway. Well, there are lots of other ways. You can, you, can, you can do this, folks, and we've worked out, we figured if they can sell books... <laughs> now, here's what we did. And I think we can prove over the long haul that the way we're going to show you to select these numbers, you don't have to follow this procedure, are just as good as anybody else's, okay? Now, so we chose six random numbers under 49, and we picked each of the numbers in a completely different way. In a moment, you're gonna see here. First, we went to a golf course as a lightning storm was approaching. And then we hired a caddy to walk to the top of the hill, ask him to hold a metal golf club above his head as the lightning approached to select our first number. And here's the tape of that. Watch the monitor. Right. <laughs> and you can see 35 minutes later, there's our first number. <laughs> 35. You <laughs> actually went out on a hill with a young boy. and Yes, we did. With a camera crew. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, we, yes, we did. On location. Yeah. For our second lucky number, <laughs> we, we went to a used car lot, called out a salesman at his lunch hour, and hit him on both feet with a circus test your strength hammer. And you'll see here how we chose the second number. Yeah! Mm. <laughs> That's right. 
there. 14. The 14 is on second. <laughs> Our second lucky number. <laughs> this is just as reliable as any of these That's others. Right. We, we got a 160-pound man to drink two jumbo soft drinks at an interstate truck stop. Then asked him to get on the highway and drive without using the restroom. five folks we took a savings and loan executive to the roof of his own bankrupt thrift covered him from head to foot with radial tires threw him into the parking lot let's watch that tape six numbers so we did one more experiment we decided to see how many sticks of dynamite it would take to blow the roof off a Kentucky outhouse roll that tape please <laughs> 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 That wins, you'll always have. That's, That's all right. we're asking. That's all we want. Yep. We'll be right back with David Letterman. Stay right back.